Sophie Hardy and the Battle of the Myriad by Emma Dale, narrated by Leona Hall. Chapter 3 Lizzie. As they walked from their bedroom into the living room, Amelia and Lizzie were exactly as Clara had predicted. Amelia was zoned out, slumped on the settee with a glass of wine on the arm. Lizzie, meanwhile, was sat with the television on, watching some programme about how adults could maximise the use of their internet implant and spend even more time lost in the online world. Sophie would normally have had opinions on this. Adults waste too much time online as it is, not fulfilling their dreams or potential, without finding ways to waste more being the prime opinion. But she was starting to really not care. Hi, Lizzie said, rather over-enthusiastically. This was something else Sophie had noticed about her. She got either overexcited or not excited enough about things that Sophie couldn't see a reason for. Each time this had happened, though, Sophie again realised it might just be a case of her sudden ageing and so didn't dwell on it too long. Sophie and Clara barely grunted at her, as Sophie didn't share her enthusiasm for someone she had seen only a few hours ago. The pair then walked into the room and slumped themselves down on the other settee. "'What do you want for tea?' Sophie asked her sister. Er, uh, beans, I think, Lizzie replied, not really taking her eyes off the television. Almost all Lizzie had eaten since her ageing had been beans. It was most unusual. She also had the same thing for breakfast every morning and snack in an afternoon as well. On top of that, Lizzie hadn't yet broken the habit of waking up at 12.30 every night and wanting something to eat. Sophie had heard her every night making her way to the cereal cupboard for something to eat. It was the most annoying habit, and Sophie wished that her sister would either grow out of it or simply be quieter, or it was going to get her in trouble with those around her. "'Wouldn't you like something else? That's all you seem to eat,' Sophie offered, as politely as she could without wanting to upset her sister. "'No, I think beans will be fine,' Lizzie replied. "'I was waiting for Mum to come back and make them.' Sophie and Clara both looked at her through their eyebrows. Lizzie looked in their vague direction, but seemed to be looking more at the wall behind Clara and Sophie. She didn't seem to be very good at picking up on facial expressions or making eye contact. Sophie stood up again and started to pick up food wrappers and drinks that their mum had left strewn all around her. "'Couldn't you have tidied up?' she asked Lizzie. "'No, that isn't one of my jobs. My job is to,' Lizzie began. "'Okay, never mind,' Sophie replied quickly cutting her off as she knew Lizzie would never do anything that she hadn't been explicitly told to by her mum, and as her mum had once flippantly said that Sophie did all the work, except for make Lizzie's bed, that was all that Lizzie did. She had taken the instruction very literally. As Sophie picked up the last thing that she could carry, Lizzie asked, "'Have you been off saving the world again?' Sophie could hear that her sister was excited, but it was very difficult to read in her face and her tone, she was as straight-faced and unemotional as she had been for the last ten days. No, Sophie replied, as if having this conversation was normal for a year six child. You don't seem to do much other than train. The only things you've ever told me about were how you went playing in the playground that was like a giant computer game against some kind of chimera that you can't beat, Lizzie said, sitting with perfect posture and the remote control balanced on her leg like she always did. Clara stepped in to help Sophie reply as Sophie made her way into the kitchen. We've seen things you can't imagine, so just keep your little opinions to yourself. Lizzie cowered slightly when Clara got cross with her and went to put her hands up over her ears, but stopped when she realised Clara had finished. Sophie could see that none of this was meant maliciously. It was just Clara's way of dealing with things at the moment, but Lizzie couldn't see it. Once in the kitchen, Sophie was faced with a mountain of washing up. She was certain that it hadn't been done since the events of ten days ago. Lizzie didn't like the feeling of getting her hands dirty, so she declined politely when asked to do it. Weirdly, she also disliked getting her hands wet as well. On top of that, there was still washing in the machine and the floor needed sweeping. The flat was quickly turning into a pigsty. "'You two, come in here!' she shouted. With great reluctance on Clara's part, Lizzie and Clara both appeared at the kitchen door, looking less than happy about being summoned. Give me a hand, please. We can't live like this. Lizzie looked at Sophie with her normal blank expression on her face, which Sophie immediately took pity on and sent her back to the living room to finish her television watching, as someone who didn't like getting mucky or wet would be no use in trying to help clean. Clara sighed at Sophie, and Sophie could see that she was struggling now that the distraction of the Encantada had been taken away. 
It had been yet another day of her getting nowhere, and her mind was clearly elsewhere rather than the flat. Sophie took pity on her also, and told her to go and sit back down. After all, Clara, Sophie kept reassuring herself, had got it a lot tougher than she had, and so needed looking after, but in a completely different way it seemed to Lizzie. Sophie then began her mountain of work that she had to do. Meanwhile, Amelia stayed in the living room, completely zoned out. The Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by Emma Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels, or if you would like to purchase a copy of the book, then be sure to check out our website, www.sophiehardysaga.com. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy. Ha <laughs>